Jarred, a Valentine's Treat and Yandere Roleplay, starring Baron Von Pasta and Musi from Musi's Modern Dreadfuls. I want you to know that you complete me, Adam. I feel like I've been in darkness my whole life until you came and let the sun shine in. A world full of black and white. And then there you were. Like a hundred and twenty pack of crayons. Lots of people say that they're in love and have experienced it. To me, that word isn't even enough. It doesn't begin to touch what we have together. We came into the world, two souls, and yet I know it was only half each. We unite to make one pure, perfect soul gliding through this life together. <laughs> you can't bring yourself to say it. I know my sweetie is shy, but in your heart, you know I'm the only one for you. We were born to love each other. Our fate stretched along the distance like an invisible cord. My friends are all so jealous. I have the perfect man. Nothing else mattered until we first kissed. I long to breathe your smell. My skin tingles for your touch. I called you today, but that's nothing new. You're at work, so I know you can't answer. I love to listen to your voice on the voicemail greeting. You like getting sweet messages from me on your breaks. Hearing from me is the best part of your day. You make me so happy. You can be one difficult person to get a hold of. I've been calling and texting you. I haven't gotten a word back. Did you break your phone? I know you're really busy. You probably just passed out after work last night. You really shouldn't go to sleep with your phone on silent, honey bear. Tried calling you again today and got a weird message. It says your number is disconnected. I know you have been wanting to do it for a while now. Always getting those telemarketing calls. I just wish you would have told me about it first. You know I forgive you though. I always do. You and I are all that we have, you know? You know I hate social media. Now I have to make an account so I can message you till I find out your new number. You're lucky my love is unconditional, you silly panda. My phone's dying and I have to go to work soon, so I won't be able to talk anymore tonight. I have big plans for us. A special surprise for Valentine's Day. I love you forever. Finally, you write me back and tell me you'll be there. I know you can't wait. I have been such a busy lady. This has got to be the best Valentine's Day present that has ever been given in the history of time. Pride is beaming through me like sunshine through a screen door. I tried my hand at art. I really hope you like it. You've been really distant lately. I want to help bring us together. I have to assemble your gift now. All of the little girls across the world on Christmas Eve night can't compare to the joy I feel 
about giving this to you. I feel like a piece of my soul's put into it. My clothes are all picked out, and I'll be on my way to you shortly. Cheryl can't wait to see her ad man. That's Adam and my man crammed together. My red earth, you make me feel like a teenager. It's finally time. I'm already in waiting for you. I know I'm early. We didn't say we'd meet here, but I missed you so much. Your apartment looks so nice. I've set your room up with candles and have taken the light bulbs out for ambiance. I accidentally broke them when I dropped them. I'm sorry. We will go out and buy more tomorrow. I'm sure I'll stay the night. I made some last minute preparations to your gift. Please forgive my hands. When an artist creates a painting, it's only normal to get messy hands. This is kind of like that. Art is art, you know? <gasps> your doorknob's turning. You're home. I hear you put your keys down and see you pause. I see you look around and try not to giggle. You'll be so surprised to see me, baby. I can't wait to see the look on your face. I'm wearing the black teddy that I wore the first time we made love. There you are, my sweetheart. Your face is frozen. Oh my goodness, baby, you're so happy that you're speechless. I throw my arms around you in a hug. Your frame is stiff, from surprise, no doubt. It's okay to hug me back, silly. I turn around and get you your present. The smile on my face almost burns my cheeks. I feel like our whole relationship has led up to this moment. When I turn back around, you're slightly farther away. What? Did you think I got you a pet or something? You're so cute when you're confused. My hands hold my gift out and offering. You don't take it. You can't stop staring at it and your hands won't stop shaking long enough to hold it steady. Be careful. It's glass, babe. If you drop it, you'll ruin the whole thing. It is so sweet. You are so touched that you are literally shaking with awe. I try to calm you down and stop your screaming so you can hear me. You're so silly, screaming like a loon. You remind me of a seven-year-old that just unwrapped the latest gaming system, screaming over and over with joy. You take out your phone and press buttons. You must be wanting to document this and take pictures. I'm so pleased. I'm really looking forward to my break. It's been a hard day and my muscles are tired. The phone vibrates and lets me know that I have text messages. My eyes close with a shudder when I see that they're from my ex. Cheryl. Here we go again. I want you to know that you complete me, Adam. I feel like I've been in darkness my whole life until you came and let the sunshine in. A world full of black and white and there you are, like a hundred and twenty pack of crayons. Lots of people say that they're in love or at least have experienced it. To me, that word isn't enough. It doesn't begin to touch what we have together. We came into the world two souls, and yet I know it was only a half each. We unite to make one pure, perfect soul gliding through this life together. I'm your perfect match. You can't bring yourself to say it. I know my sweetie is shy. 
but in your heart you know I'm the only one for you. We were born to love each other, our fate stretched along the distance like an invisible cord. My friends are all so jealous I have the perfect man. Nothing else mattered until we first kissed. I long to breathe your smell. My skin tingles for your touch. I called you today, but that's nothing new. You're at work, so you can't answer. It's okay though, I love to listen to your voice on the greeting. You like getting sweet messages from me on your breaks. Hearing one from me is the best part of your day. I'm so happy to be yours. Wow. I had dated Cheryl for a few months. She was way too fucking intense for me. So I broke it off. Looking back, sure. I guess I laid it on a little thick myself, but this was just ridiculous. We spent the first month of our relationship just smoking, drinking, and having a good time. We would talk way late into the evenings, even though we had to work early the next day. It started to be too much of a good thing. The more I pulled away, the more she fought to keep me suffocatingly close. I felt my pocket vibrate and cringed. Another text from, you guessed it, Cheryl. You can be one difficult person to get a hold of. I've been calling and texting you. I haven't got a word back. Did you break your phone? I know you're really busy. You probably just passed out after work last night. You really shouldn't go to sleep with your phone on silent, honey bear. I love you, XOXO. She would show up at my job every other day, and it was cute at first. Once in a while is fine. I did enjoy seeing her, but it just got too much. If I had a meeting and was late for my lunch break, I would find her crying in my office. She was always asking if I was mad at her. After we'd have sex, I'd hold her sweetly and she would apologize for losing her shit. She'd say it was because she just loved me so much. Eventually, after too many of these instances, I broke it off. She kept calling me and crying every day over and over again. I felt horrible that I had hurt her so badly and of course I apologized for how I felt. I asked her as firmly as I could without being a total asshole not to contact me again. I got floods of messages, calls, and voicemails. They would come all hours of the night and day. She'd call over and over again during meetings, thinking if she was persistent enough, I would answer. I'm not totally heartless. We had talked for hours when it was time for me to end things. I made sure she was clear on everything and tried my best to answer all of her questions. She was just still trying to hold on in any way that she could. I'm not this kind of guy, but... I had no choice but to block her number. She's not the kind of girl that lets down easy. The barrage of messages goes on as if we were still together, even now two weeks later. Sometimes I feel like the biggest jerk ever for ignoring her, but it's the only option. Any response through messages or phone calls to her meant I wanted her back. It'd be like feeding gasoline to a fire. Even a fucking pocket dial to her meant that I was coming back. My finger only hovered a mere second before pressing the delete option on her contact info on my phone. I made sure the number was still saved to my block list before going to bed. This was all exhausting. Jesus. I just woke up to 21 text messages and 3 voicemails from her through a Wi-Fi texting app. There were at least 8 different numbers, all of them I didn't recognize. This was really starting to unnerve me. It didn't help that my ringtone was set to the twilight zone either. Her train of thought baffles me. This is dangerously flirting with obsessive. Enough is enough. 
Shit like this is exactly why I've put my phone on silent. I pull out my phone and dial the service help number. I put in a request for a number change. It had taken me so long to get the old one memorized, I hated to do it. This is the last chance she has to take the hint and move on. I'm sure she can find someone perfectly suited for her enthusiasm. I smile despite myself. The world is full of sociopaths. My workday is over and I've just gotten home. I hop on the computer to, um, pass some time and see that I have a new instant messenger notification from Cheryl. My blood chills more with every inch that my fingers take towards opening it. I never thought she'd have an account of all people. She'd always been totally against it. An annoyed groan escapes my lips as I read it. I tried calling again today and got a weird message. It says that your number is disconnected. I know you have been wanting to do it for a while now, always getting telemarketing calls. I just wish you told me about it first. You know I forgive you though. I always do. You and I are all we have, you know. You know I hate social media. I'm too jealous for it. Now I had to make an account so I can message you till I get the new number. You're lucky my love is unconditional, you silly panda. My phone's dying and I have to go to work soon. I won't be able to talk anymore tonight, but I'm always thinking of you. I have big plans for us. A surprise for Valentine's Day. Meet me at the park where we met at 8. I love you forever. Shit. I'd been so absorbed in trying to be uncoupled, I totally had mentally blocked Valentine's Day. It was in like five days or so. If I kept hiding from her, she will just find new ways to contact me. She drives by my house ridiculously early every morning. The only peace that I get is at work as she's no longer allowed there. None of it does any good. As much as I hate it, I have to meet with her. I have to put an end to this. It has to stop. Despite my earlier words about gasoline and fire, I contact her back and tell her, I'll be there. That's it. Just those three words. The heart emoji immediately appears under it, showing that her hopes are already up. I don't get it. Why hasn't she taken the hint by now? It's not like I'm leading her on. It's the complete opposite. Even if we were together, like the illusion she was under, I had ignored her for the longest time. Why would she even want to be with a person like that? The longer I think about it, I guess the more it starts to make sense. My respect for her feelings as a human being had completely distracted me from seeing it at first. The pieces came together and I realized that she's obviously mentally afflicted. I go to work on Valentine's Day. The significance of the holiday, honestly, the furthest thing from my mind. My stomach is queasy, like the feeling you get when you smoke a bunch of cigarettes on an empty stomach. The very last thing I want to do is see her again. The day flies by as it usually does on days where I'm trying to avoid something. The more mental effort I put into ignoring it, the faster the hands on the clock would spin. She hasn't contacted me today. Maybe she's changed her mind about wanting to see me. It's probably wishful thinking, of course. Well, things can't be that easy, now can they? I'm about to enter the house and the door opens easily, unlocked. Alarm bells accompany little red flags popping up in my head. I don't live in the greatest part of town and always lock my door. Upon entering the house, I also see that the lights are all off. I freeze and check my surroundings for anything out of place. There's an 
eerie luminescence shining under my bedroom door frame. When I open the door, Cheryl is standing right in the middle of my fucking bedroom. My skin breaks out in goosebumps and my mouth dries. How did she even get in here? I told her I would meet her later at the damn park I wish I'd never gone to. That park has done nothing but do my fate for the past month. I never want to see it again. I guess I don't have to now, though, I think dryly to myself. There are candles everywhere. Her long nails are speckled with blood. I see broken bulbs shattered by her feet on the floor. Did she cut herself? The fact that she took them out to begin with scares me more than the possibility of her being hurt, honestly. As hard as I try, I cannot think of one thing to say. I try to leave when she turns around, but she's too quick for me. She has something in her hands. What the hell is that? God, in her hands, she holds a large glass jar smeared with red. It's hard for me to see exactly what's in it at first, but once I do, I'm horrified. Inside the jar is a mess with gore. There are hearts inside. Some look like animal hearts, but I can distinctly see one that's the size of a human fist. There's also another one that's so small my mind can't even take me to the horrors of its origin. I slowly pull out my phone to dial the police. She's smiling radiantly and starts to speak. Adam, I know we haven't been doing so well lately. You know there will never be anyone else for me. Maybe my whole heart isn't enough. So I went out and got you some others. No one will ever feel about you the way that I do. I love you, Adam. With all of my hearts.